Yo best, yo best, yo best, yo best. That shit crazy. On a Monday, it's all leaving with your boy Barrington Grant. I'm so, so excited. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Lots to get into. There's concerns in the NFL. Baseball is coming back. We had an interesting weekend in regards to some intra-squad games and some scrimmage games, if you want to call it that. We have NBA talks in regards to who is the MVP. Lots to get to. As well as Dummy of the Week. We already have a contestant already. I'm excited. But before we get into any of these sports topics, you know, I really want to talk about John Lewis. John Lewis passed away this weekend. He's a great man. Civil rights activist. You know, he was out there with Martin Luther King. Fighting a good fight. You know, he literally had battle scars from being beaten back in those days. He was Black Lives Matter before Black Lives Matter became a slogan. So my thoughts and prayers are definitely with the Lewis family and everybody that loved that man. So I just wanted to get that out of the way before we start talking about these issues in the sports world. So topic number one, the NFL players concern about their safety as training camp opens. A lot of the star players, they're tweeting about their concerns. You know, they want testing done daily, which the NFL recently, according to reports, they've just approved that. So they are going to do that for at least the first two weeks of camp. So let's see exactly how that transpires going after those two weeks. But it's just very weird to me that the NFL would take this stance against the players. These are your money makers. NFL is a cash cow. It's all about money. The owners only care about money. And you can, you can see that now. That the players are worried about their safety. And the owners don't really care about the safety. All they care about is how much money they're going to save or lose when the NFL starts. Players don't want any preseason games. I agree with that. Why have preseason games when you can contract the disease that way? Doesn't really make sense for your star players to play in preseason. So have training camp be full contact within the, you know, the last two weeks of camp. That's smart. Having preseason games isn't, but it's all about the owner's pockets, isn't it? Now, the, most, the more fascinating thing to me is that the players are speaking out about this. You didn't hear any Demora Smith come out. And it makes me think that the players don't really have that much confidence in Demora Smith. So they're deciding to be the front man for their own cause. That, that's what it looks like to me. I, De, Demora Smith and Roger Goodell have such a contentious relationship that I think if he would have came out and said this on the player's behalf... I don't really think much would have happened. But the fact that the star players and all of these other players have these concerns and they're really adamant about it, we're starting to see some movement. How convenient the players are forced to work in these conditions, but the owners are not going to be there. Their family members are not going to be there. Their kids are not going to be there. So you can really see how the players can look at it as a slap in the face. Like... You're just sending them out there to get sick. You're sending them out there without a concern. So why should they try hard? Why should they go out there and risk their bodies for you? What's going on in the NFL right now is kind of similar to what's going on in our country, right? People are feeling like they're not being taken care of. They're not being protected. Some states want to say, wear a mask. Some states say, no, 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 you shouldn't wear a mask. There's no uniformity. And that's what it feels like in the NFL is that instead of uniformity, we have chaos. If they think that they're going to have these players be happy in this environment, these owners have another thing coming. All of these issues should have been ironed out way before training camp. Other sports literally had to stop. The NBA had to stop. The NHL had to stop. 
baseball was in the process of, of beginning and they had to stop. The NFL was the only sport to watch everything happen and just sit on their hands. Why? Because they're so confident in, yeah, this is a money-making thing. We don't have to worry about it. But pride cometh before the fall. I'm telling you, they move so stupid sometimes that you really have to wonder how they are so successful. If I watch five people drop into a pothole... I'm not going to drop into that pothole because I know the pothole is there. So I'm going to make my adjustments to get around that pothole. Where has the NFL made any adjustments? Players have an issue, they take to Twitter, and all of a sudden, now there's change. Really, really interesting to see how this plays out before camp or even before the season. After the break, I'm going to tell you what I think the players should do in this particular situation. It's all leaving with Baron to Grant. Stick with me. Back after this. I am so stressed because I hate my job. Let me guess. You're at a dead-end job and find it hard not to press the snooze button? Well, come down to Connecticut School of Broadcasting. We have campuses in Westbury, New York, Boston, Connecticut, New Jersey, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Develop your skills in broadcast media that include audio production, television, radio, and sports broadcasting. Learn from industry professionals in a small, intimate class setting for a better experience. The hands-on training is second to none. And if you're worried about what to do after graduation, the Connecticut School of Broadcasting helps you to get job placement. Take it from me. It took me seven years to get here, and it's been the best time of my life. Go to GoCSB.com or dial 1-800-887-2346 for a studio tour. And who knows, maybe you'll be the next media superstar. Welcome back. So let's just get right into it. What should the NFL players do if they're not feeling safe? Sometimes the right thing to do is the hardest thing to do. So they should sit out. They shouldn't play. They should not play until every particular concern they have is addressed. If the NFL wants to go softly on testing or other protocols that the players don't feel safe with, sit out. Hold your ground. Stand your ground. Don't have anybody cross that line. Now, granted, I I'm sitting here saying that like it's easy for somebody to not get a check. But sometimes the right thing to do is the hardest thing to do. In order for you to create real change for your business or for your particular job, sometimes you need to strike. Sometimes you need to say, we're not coming to work in order for things to get better. If people continue to cross that picket line, they're always going to have that advantage over you. So stand your ground. Don't give in. Allow this to, to play out until they start to sweat. Because the owners are greedy. They know those TV deals are coming up and they have to make good on those TV deals. So if there's no players to play for those TV deals, there's no money. There's no sponsorship. If there was ever a year that the players should say, to hell with football, it's this year. You have over a hundred staffers or a hundred employees per team in the NFL safety is a huge issue this is a full contact sport players have to know that everything is correct for them to feel safe to play and play freely so if the NFL continues to take this stance sit out Striking has always been a thing in this country, and it's gotten things done. You guys are no different. Don't be scared to sit out. 2020 has been a terrible year. Terrible year. What better message to send to the NFL owners to say, 
yeah, we just don't feel comfortable this year to play. Let, let's let's talk next year. If you want to rip up the CBA, fine. We were thinking about ripping it up anyway because we actually want a better deal. Until you hear a smart, logical plan from the NFL, don't move a muscle. Maybe then the owners will really appreciate NFL players like human beings. Like they're not just robots out there that can't get sick, that can't get hurt, that can't take a virus back to their family and get somebody sick and potentially die. This is real life issues. This is real. And the NFL needs to wake up and act accordingly. This is real. This is not a video game. This is not a simulation. Do what's best for the players or they don't play at all. Listen, I'm good. I don't need fantasy football this year. I was terrible last year and I don't need it this year. So if they strike and don't play, it's better for me because I'll, I won't make any bad decisions. So as I said, sometimes the right thing to do is the hardest thing to do. What we have after the break is a little baseball. It was an interesting weekend for the sport. It's all even. Barrett and Grant, back after this. Can't believe this is happening again. I'm sick and tired of this car. We have all been there, stuck on the road with people to see and places to go, so your radiator is busted. No problem. A to Z Auto can have you back on the road in no time. I took my car to A to Z, had a nice cold beverage, and was out of there before I knew it. 42 years of service, you can bet that not only do they take care of your car, but they take care of you. Custom work, nobody does it better. Bob is knowledgeable and can diagnose the problem in a matter of minutes. From his five-star reviews to the testimonials of customers' experiences, A to Z Auto is top-notch. Located at 1048 Hortons Lane in South Hole, New York. Ask for Bob and let him handle the rest. For a free quote, call 631-765-6849 and never get stuck in the heat again. And we are back. Baseball is back. And it was an interesting weekend. I was talking to one of my close friends today and I asked him a question. I said, give me one word that describes the games and he said to me weird now let's kind of dive into that I watched Mets and Yankees this weekend and I was excited I'm a baseball lifer so seeing bat to ball is always going to be great for me as well as all the other diehard fans you know what it felt like it felt like watching peewee baseball it felt like watching the little league world series it felt like when you're just playing baseball with your friends in the park. That's what it felt like to me. So watching it didn't really bother me because I'll watch any baseball. I don't care what it is. As long as I have my baseball, I'm fine. Now let's take it from the player's perspective. The players, I'm sure it's not going to bother them as well because they're so focused on their craft. A pitcher goes through his routines. He has to focus on getting these batters out, making sure his mechanics are down. A batter has to make sure that his mechanics are down, that he's not dropping his back shoulder. All of these particular things, they're not worried about the bells and whistles. That's for us. They're just playing the game. And for players that have a hard time playing in a certain market, like here in New York, it's tough to play in New York. You go 0 for 12 in a series, the back pages are going to kill you. The next time you go up, fans are booing the hell out of you. There's no fans to boo you anymore. So those players that are a little bit sensitive to that criticism, they don't have that now. They can just focus on rebuilding their mechanics, rebuilding their form, getting back to some type of consistency. That is going to be a great thing for the players. So definitely it's weird but it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad weird. It's just different. I really think baseball is going to have a real chance to be successful in this shortened season due to the fact that there's pretty much social distancing in baseball anyway. Other than the dugout, everybody's pretty spaced out. 
you're not on top of each other. You're throwing a ball, hitting it with a bat, and throwing it to a base that's 90 feet away. So the game at its purest form is going to be fine. The problem is, can this appeal to the casual fan? I personally don't think so. I really don't. Because baseball already, with all the bells and whistles, I used to hear from people who don't watch it, yeah, this is boring. I can't watch this. Now there's no fans, there's no bells and whistles like that, it's going to be real hard to captivate a casual audience. Unless they can recreate something special. I remember the summer of 98, like it was yesterday. That summer of baseball was so great. Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire in his home run chase. That brought casual fans to the seats, to the TV. I remember being on the street and I'm hearing people talking about Sammy Sosa. I'm hearing my family members talking about Sammy Sosa. They've never watched baseball a day of their life. But what it did was it captivated the audience. There was excitement. There was fun. They were hitting home runs and showing emotion. We didn't particularly care when Mark McGuire had that bottle of Andro in his, in his locker. Who cares? He was mashing home runs and everybody loved it. Baseball made so much money that year. So how can baseball recreate this now? By letting the players have fun. Let them be mic'd up. Let them show more emotion. Let them celebrate when home runs are hit. Let them do something a little different. This is a season where MLB should be experimenting with a whole bunch of different quirky things to try. Different camera angles. Hire some Hollywood production team to make the home runs look dramatic on replay. Do something out of the blue. Baseball has turned into the black sheep of the sports family. You got football, who's the, the darling of the family. Basketball, who everybody loves as well. But nobody really cares about baseball. So what? Get into trouble. Do something different that stands out, that makes people say, well, okay, now we got to pay attention to you. What do you want to say? What mark are you trying to leave? This should be a season that everybody remembers as the season that reintroduce baseball to the world reintroduce these particular players as being lovable characters as being people that love the game as being marketable baseball players are marketable too show that show how special these guys are it's been too long and if Rob Manfred can't get it done then he needs to step down and let somebody else take baseball into the next generation cause he ain't it so after the break, talk a little NBA in regards to who is the MVP of the regular season. It's all even. Back after this. This is a public service announcement. Down in your luck? Tired of being curved? Sick of going out with the fellas and being the only loser without a lady? Well, I got something for you. It's called Sex Panther. Legend has it that it's made out of real bits of real panther, so you know it's good. To men, it stings the nostrils. But to women, you may as well be a slab of meat in a dog pound. And that's not all it does. You could be getting ready to see that special fox and disaster hits. No money in the budget for gas, only dinner for two. No problem. The fumes from Sex Panther can give your car 38 miles to the gallon. Sold you yet? I thought so. For $69.99, go from unlovable loser to the cock in the walk. Sex Panther. 60% of the time, it works every time. Candidates Giannis Antetokounmpo and LeBron James. Giannis is the reigning MVP. He's had a monster season. The Bucks are the number one seed in the East. Everything looks great in regards to him repeating. However, 
I think that LeBron James is the MVP. And hear me out. LeBron James spent his entire career in the Eastern Conference. And for years, people have been saying, oh, well, it's the, it's the Eastern Conference. There's no competition for him in the Eastern Conference. He's dominated the Eastern Conference, and he's gotten to these many finals just because of that. There's a lack of competitive teams in the East. Okay. So he takes his talents to the Western Conference, where all the quote-unquote competitive teams are. And he's led the league in assist. His PER is as high as it's ever been in his career. His efficiency is up. Everything is on the plus side for LeBron James this season. He's in a harder conference. And the Lakers are the number one seed in the Western Conference. So that alone puts him over Giannis. Now, I'm not saying that Giannis didn't have a great season. He had an all-time season for the history books. But we're talking about most valuable player for the league. And it has to be LeBron James. The Milwaukee Bucks have a very good balanced team. They have outside shooting. They have perimeter defense. They have rim protection. They're well coached. If you take Giannis off that team... Not saying that they're going to be great, but they will still make the playoffs, whether they're a sixth seed, a seventh seed, an eighth seed, maybe a fifth seed, if things break right for them. They can still be a playoff team. Just like when that that guy in Toronto last year took about 50 games off and that team was still one of the best teams in the league. If you take LeBron James off the Lakers... The Lakers are not a good team. They are not even close to an efficient team. When LeBron James is off the court, the Lakers' efficiency offensively drops to 29th in the league. When he's on the court with that same unit, they rise to number two in the NBA in offensive efficiency. That right there tells you how important this man is to this particular team. How important he is to the makeup, the dynamic, the character, the aggression. Everything about this team screams LeBron James. You can't really say that about the Bucs. We love Giannis. He's a great player. He may just be the defensive player of the year this year. If if it's not him, it may be Anthony Davis. So I'm not taking anything away from Giannis. It's just that there's no way you can be able to reward him the MVP when LeBron James clearly has had a bigger impact on this NBA season. We've seen what the Bucs did last year. They dominated the league last year. Giannis dominated the league and was the MVP. But this year, that last week of that uh, of the NBA season where LeBron James beat the Clippers and the Bucs handily and showed that he was the king. He was the number one guy in the league. That's when all the votes started to change. So I believe that these eight games are going to come and go. And we're going to award LeBron James his fifth MVP. Because he deserves it. He deserves it. Out of any other year, he deserves it more than any other year. The media keeps pushing the goalposts back. And he keeps scoring touchdowns. That's what LeBron James does. The media tells him, you need to win a championship to be considered great. He goes to Miami. They say that it's the worst move that he ever did. He wins two championships. If the Lakers go ahead and win this championship this year, LeBron James has crowned the MVP and the finals MVP. What will they say next? All right, coming up. It's the best segment of the day. We're talking about Dummy of the Week. Let's get all even.
back after this. Car trouble? Need a reliable, dependable place to bring your vehicle to? Come to A to Z Auto Radiator and Air Conditioning. We have repaired radiators and ACs and cars with names from A to Z. Big RVs? Doesn't matter. A to Z Auto has serviced our community for 42 years and counting. Aluminum welding, bead blasting, new fuel tanks cleaned and relined, custom work on radiators and heaters, we, we do, do it all. A to Z Auto, located at 1040A Hortons Lane in South Pole, New York. Bob never lets a customer leave without a handshake. Come see us. <laughs> 95.5 Let It Fly FM We play the biggest classic rock hits Hey, this is Steven Tyler This is Paul McCartney Oh, the hits Only on 95.5 W-L-I-F Welcome back It's almost time for my favorite segment It's Dummy of the Week Dummy, yeah We have contestants every Monday and Friday And then we pick the winners on that Friday show So without further ado Drum roll please And the winner is Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown is my dummy. Yeah. And the reason why he's my dummy of the week this week is because for the tenth time, Antonio Brown has retired from the NFL. How many times are you gonna go through this, man? Yo, he's like the boy who cried wolf. At this point, nobody cares. I saw one particular article about it, and that was it. Nobody cares. The only people that really care about Antonio Brown retiring are fantasy football players because that's the only time you actually care about Antonio Brown. He has become a punchline, and he's only done it to himself. Maybe what he needs to do is pick up a bottle of Vaseline, eat it, and go to China or you know call Stephon Mulberry and get some advice maybe he needs to go to the CFL and become a legend there cause at this point nobody cares about Antonio Brown so my man if you never win another award in your life just know that you are one of the contestants and one of the front runners for dummy of the week that's a wrap for this show. I'll see y'all Friday. Stay safe. Peace. <laughs>